Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar titled Vault Basic versus Pro. And uh, my name is, uh, is Michael Germain. This webinar is brought to you by Live Lab Learning, which is a subsidiary of Academic Corp, a wholly owned subsidiary of Applied Software Company created to provide world-class training. Again, my name is Michael Germain, and I'm a delighted to be your moderator today. Um, throughout our presentation, we encourage you to interact to, uh, with us by typing in questions and comments using the questions pane on your dashboard. We will be answering questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded and will be made available to you online on our YouTube channel after the presentation. Um, and if you notice here, Kevin, if you could uh, go to the next slide, here's a list of uh, some upcoming events. Uh, so if any one of these uh, are of interest to you or, or any of your colleagues, um, please note the time and date that we'll be doing these presentations. We'd love to have you, um, you know, part of those as well. And doing the presentation today is going to be Kevin Houck. Kevin Houck has been with Applied Software for over 15 years. He's a project manager and uh, a data implementation specialist and, and really a guru when it comes to um, uh, the Vault product and, uh, and knowledge base. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. And uh, again, Kevin's going to be doing the presentation at the end. We'll, uh, we'll answer any questions uh, that you might have for yourself. Kevin? Thanks, Michael. OK, so yes, uh, as Michael mentioned, I look forward to uh, detailing some of the differences and features that uh, come along with Vault Basic and uh, Vault Professional. Uh, your takeaway today should be an understanding of uh, these different tools and how they can improve your design process uh, of the products that you manufacture. But first, let's talk about why data management in the first place. So the idea behind Vault is that we can link together all of the products in your suite, saving time in organizing these files and also managing when and why they change throughout the process. This can help you get designs done quicker with fewer errors and the ability, which we'll show, to roll back to previous revisions, create new, ver new versions from existing data, and publish this information out to vendors, suppliers, contractors, and clients. We'll start today with Vault Basic. Vault Basics uh, is, in, is designed to manage the data of the design team. Uh, to do this, it's got specific integrations into the application that you guys use day to day. Uh, performing an open from uh, Vault is really no different than performing an open from your local workspace or uh, network share. This is actually enhanced by the ability to search for data inside of the vault from these file open commands. And this exists in anything from Inventor to AutoCAD, to AutoCAD Electrical, and the rest of the, the suite products. While we're doing this and checking data in and out, we're capturing file history and we're saving, we're having version control as we move through our design process. Finally, Vault Basic is easy to administer. There's really no IT certification necessary to uh, create users, manage uh, groups, and provide secure access to your data. So let's take a look at a few of the more specific features for Vault Basic. We talked about some of the CAD integrations as well, but I want to point out and highlight that this really integrates with all of the products in your suite. In addition, it also integrates with Microsoft Office. This allows you to manage some of the other data that comes along with your design process as you use um, Inventor, AutoCAD, and our simulation products. One important thing uh, is that when, wh while you're on subscription and when the new release comes out, Vault Professional and Vault Basic are released on the same time. This means that you can quickly take advantage of new features provided to you in the, in the CAD application and the, your data management application can be upgraded at the same time. So let's talk about managing your designs. 
from the picture here, you can see that we have an assembly and that we ha are, are controlling and maintaining the relationships for all of its various sub-assemblies and parts. This also uh, functionality is available in uh, AutoCAD through the XREFs and AutoCAD Electrical through its project navigator. Furthermore, here in the application, we have a wizard that allows us to quickly and easily rename files. Oftentimes, when renaming uh, CAD data, we can have the opportunity to lose the relationship on copy or rename and move. Vault solves this problem by automatically updating the relationships as data is moved around in the environment. Furthermore, one of the perhaps lesser used features that I see in my travels is creating associations between uh, files. Uh, Vault gives you the ability to associate a specific version of perhaps an AutoCAD drawing with a specific uh, version of another document type of maybe PDF or Word and allows you to create a relationship so that as one is edited, you can definitely see that you might need to update a Word document, perhaps a document that describes that part or assembly or drawing. So it allows for a unique way to organize your data and make sure that all of the documentation about your design is moving forward at the same pace. Again, one of the challenges with managing lots of data uh, is that it, we end up transversing large uh, directory structures and sometimes that's not exactly the most uh, efficient way of finding data. Oftentimes what we're able to do with Vault is allow users to search index metadata such as perhaps the description field and index say for example this description field in the title block of a drawing. If that's searchable then we can make it easily found so really opening data becomes less about navigating folders and really just finding the data you want and opening it directly from the CAD application. Furthermore, in Vault Basic and Professional, we have the ability to index the text inside of drawings and provide a larger search criteria as well. And with this, there's some other integrations as well that allow us to save searches. Um, common ones are files that may be checked out to you or files with a certain material or perhaps project or part number. This makes it easier for users to find data and be confident that they're looking at the correct version when they go to check files out. One of the best tools inside of the vault is copy design. This tool allows you to easily create new designs uh, from existing data. So for example in this case we're copying a large parts of this assembly and, and reusing certain other standard designs. As soon as we click OK, Vault uh, gathers up the relationships and creates new data from this. At the same time, it's updating properties and you're able to hit the ground running with your next idea. As we create new data, check the files in and out and create new versions, we're creating a history, a file history. This is very handy and unique to Vault, something that uh, it's very hard to do with something like, say, Windows Explorer or Network Shares. Rather than spending the time in saving your files as a certain uh, revision level or version level, with that perhaps in the name, Vault capture the, captures these versions automatically. These versions, we can easily roll back to those by perhaps, say, in this case, selecting version 1 and we can use that as, say, a basis for a new design, or if we went down a path that we don't no longer want to follow, we can back up to a previous idea that we had without losing any uh, productivity. Another great feature of using Vault is our ability to create a custom content center library for the design team. It's this library that may contain, we may customize and add in your company's part numbers to uh, nuts, bolts, washers, other structural members. Um, and, and also we have the ability to change uh, purchase part uh, description formats. So if we're trying to get information out to other systems downstream, we might have some requirements on the description field for those, those components. And also could be handy to pre-populate 
our company's part number with these purchase components if we're applying company part numbers to those. So in this case, we're able to bring everybody together and ha point them all at the same central library for those components. In addition, Vault has the ability to manage uh, certain complex parts like iParts and assemblies and even iFeatures so that users are placing these components, the standard components, into their assemblies and are confident about what version they should be using. So, in an overview, Vault Basic is for your design team, for work in progress data, integrated into our applications that we use every day. We have these integrations allow users to stay inside the app and stay designing rather than simply managing data. We provide other tools for speeding this process and we capture file history as we go. Now, on to Vault Professional. Vault Professional really extends all of the same functionality that we just discussed. So all of those features um, are available in Vault Professional, but we take this all to one step beyond and we allow or have the ability to allow other non-CAD users access to the data. We have other options for security and file control so that we can make sure that users outside of the design and engineering group, perhaps marketing, purchasing, project management, even executives, they're looking at the correct data at the right time. We also have the ability to report on data. We provide an easy, uh, thin client access, even through a web browser. So rather than navigating files and folders, we can provide users quick, lightweight access to be able to view, search, and print in a web browser. Finally, we have other automation for custom jobs, and also we can scale to larger work groups and multiple sites. So we can bring together a larger design team, even globally, into the same ecosystem for the data. And again, we also have additional options for publishing data out to other systems, which we'll take a deeper dive into. So let's start by talking about revision control. Where Vault Basic provided version control, we now have the ability to leverage uh, life cycles. Life cycles are the process in which your data becomes, say, released or approved for either manufacturing, construction, what have you. At each state, from say work in progress to review to release, we can control what users and groups on your network have the ability to view, edit, uh, mark up the, this type of data. Furthermore, we have Windows Explorer like file and folder level security. This might allow us to hide entire folders or projects uh, from certain groups. This is handy in the case of uh, research and development or beginning an ideation process. Furthermore, each time we transition from say work in progress to maybe released, we can fire off different actions. These actions may do things such as uh, synchronize different properties. If Vault is tracking our revision level and it knows what it's at, we can write that automatically to the drawing. This saves time and also errors by simply updating that property. Furthermore, we have the ability to create DWFs at that point, perhaps PDFs or even output step files. Uh, during these transitions, but we're able to do it at the right time when perhaps the data has been approved. Also, Vault Professional comes with Buzzsaw as part of it, and we have the option for synchronizing our data up to that Buzzsaw in order to invite other suppliers, contractors, or vendors into our design process. So let's take a look at the Inventor integration specifically. This integration, as you can see here, it's common across all interfaces, but allows us to easily know what files have been released, what files are in change, and what files are checked out by other users. This is extremely uh, valuable when working with a large team, as users can work on sub-assemblies or some components at the same time as other users uh, when they're working on 
perhaps the top level assembly in this case. This uh, user interface is common throughout AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD, and your various other applications. These status icons are key to letting the users know if they're looking at a historical revision or version, or if their assembly is completely up to date. Also in Inventor and AutoCAD is where, as Vault knows when the files were revised and when they were changed, and because we're capturing our descriptions and our version history, we can automatically update the revision table. This is done as part of the custom actions, so perhaps on, on release we may insert a new row, update the date, and the user which made the change. We can do this because Vault is tracking all of this information as metadata. Furthermore, we can support multiple revision schemes. For example, if a company has perhaps an internal uh, release process that may be alphabetical, before going to customer approval, which might uh, cause a change to a numeric revision scheme. We can support that with Vault Revision Table Management. Again, another integration with, with an, uh, Vault Professional and Inventor is the ability to take an Inventor parts list and increase the value of that parts list by allowing other users to perhaps edit that. This is handy in instances where we might want to bring large assemblies together, perhaps not in CAD, but we would want to do that in the bill of materials. So we have the ability to combine perhaps a mechanical bill of material with an electrical bill of material for a more complete picture of the design. Furthermore, we can add in purchase components and things we may not model, such as paint or grease or uh, uh, shipping containers and other things of that nature. This can be done by non-CAD users, so we can empower other users perhaps in say purchasing quality to participate in the design process while our engineers are focused on the design itself. One of my favorite features is also the ability to report on data in the vault. Imagine if you could take a look at your data and know where it is in the design process. Since Vault Professional is tracking what state files may be in, either work in progress, released, or perhaps some other nomenclature that is uh, germane to your company, Vault can report on where it is in the, in the design process. This can be extended to perhaps report on materials, what components are made up of what material or uh, perhaps used in what different assemblies. Furthermore, this extends inside of Inventor, it's not just inside of Vault Pro, so that we can visually see inside of perhaps an assembly what the components are perhaps made of. So in this case, if we wanted to select all uh, components that were perhaps steel and change that to a different either uh, steel property or uh, change the material, we can select this through a report and then make the property change uh, for the entire assembly. This really allows the users in large assemblies to get a better idea of what's going on and what files are in edit and who might be also editing other files. In addition, as Vault knows about the change and why things are happening, it also provides an engineering change order functionality. This is really a roll-up view of the, datas that, of the data files that are in change. You can see here that we also have the ability to mark the files up. And we're also capturing comments from people either in engineering or other uh, users that may be affected by the change, such as shop floor and manufacturing. This allows companies to get a complete picture of what was changed and why. And it follows this specific workflow of uh, managing that change through the process, perhaps having a approval board that either everyone must sign off on a design or any one of the approvers can sign off on, a ch on an existing change. This can also fire off custom actions, such as uh, sending a bill of material out to a third-party system and updating uh, the views of the files as well.
one of the most exciting features recently has been a redesign of the Vault Professional Thin Client. This has really become a great tool to expand uh, the design out to other users that perhaps don't have CAD at all. Furthermore, they wouldn't be consuming an expensive seat of CAD software in order to simply view, search, mark up, and print these designs. This site's been redesigned recently to include additional properties and searching functionality. Really, the viewing is top notch. We've used the same DWF file that's created during our design. These DWF files, they contain everything that we need in order to create a fidelity print. So if we were using custom, uh, perhaps, uh, fonts inside of AutoCAD, we can be sure that when somebody prints this file, it's available and it looks as the user designed it. Furthermore, and again with Buzzsaw, we have the ability to invite other users, out, even outside of our organization, into the design process. So when purchasing a seat of Vault Professional, this comes with a gigabyte and a login of Buzzsaw and integrations to synchronize data ad hoc, or as mentioned before, on perhaps a lifecycle definition or state change. These users are then notified uh, that new data is available. And furthermore, we can see at what point users logged in to retrieve that information. They can then post changes to Buzzsaw, which can optionally be pulled directly back into the Vault environment. This speeds collaboration rather than having to copy data around to a different part of the network, clumsy FTP clients, and uh, with the ability to control access and invite other users also without an IT degree. One of the greatest benefits of Vault Professional is also its ability to scale. While Vault, Vault Professional allows for, we leverage SQL Server technology so that we can replicate the data and also perhaps the database across the ocean or uh, across the country. This is really important in providing fast access for users to the data that they're trying to edit. So this really can make an impact when users are trying to check out files across the slow connections. We've got a lot of great tools in order to make sure that they are looking at the correct data at the right time. If a user checks in a file and it has not replicated yet, a user at the remote site is simply prompted with the option to pull it on demand. That plus synchronizing throughout the day or evening this really powerful way to expand the, the process of, the, of design. Furthermore, we're able to integrate with Active Directory and leverage those same logins. Now that we've we are managing our data inside a vault, we're building our bills of materials, and we have a lot of metadata that, we, that Vault is aware of. Vault can be a single point of integration to get this data out to other systems. Imagine that we can have a release point. Imagine that we can parse out a bill of materials from that and automatically send it with perhaps documentation to other systems. Applied Software and Vault Professional, we've had a lot of experience with the API and customizations of this type. In different cases, we have automated it entirely or provided a certain review state so that we can then review the design and upon perhaps a, a button release inside of the client itself, we can send data to downstream systems. And this slide defines that. We've had a lot of uh, experience and success with this, especially recently, around uh, custom objects as well. With custom objects, we're able to capture other information about the design and provide that to other systems, such as contact information and email. So in a brief overview of the functionality, let's recap what we've gone through. Vault Professional includes all of the functionality from Vault Basic, from copy design, rename, and version control. It extends that with 
uh, allowing the ability of other users, non-CAD users, access to the vault. But we do that with life cycles and controlling the security of the file. Furthermore, we provide a way to manage uh, engineering change with notifications, replicate the data to other sites or other continents, and provide secure access through a web client for view, search, and print. Coupled with Buzzsaw, we can invite other users outside our, our company's network into the design process. Meanwhile, and we're capturing file history of the design as it moves through our, our engineering team. Let's briefly talk about some of the requirements around Vault Basic and Vault Professional. Vault Basic comes with your subscription and with your suite. It's, there is no additional license required, but in order for a user to access data in the Vault Basic, uh, they must have installed a fully licensed CAD application, such as Inventor, AutoCAD, uh, Navisworks, those sorts of things. Whereas Vault Pro, we're, it's defined to leverage other users into the system, it's a network license application. And what we find is that typically designers will consume a network seat most of the time. This is in their daily use of checking files in, checking files out, placing components from Content Center, bringing together uh, different files from Vault and in their normal workflow. Often, we're able to leverage perhaps network licensing to provide a fewer number of licenses out to project managers or other users that may not be using the system full time. Furthermore, the Vault Pro web client is not licensed and you have the ability to leverage that for your entire organization. Functionality there is limited to view, search, and print. I'd like to leave this chart up, actually, while we move to questions that we might have. So, Michael, if you wouldn't mind, I'll go ahead and back up one slide so that we can kind of be clear about uh, the different features. Do we have any questions to discuss, Michael? Uh, I don't think there's any questions at this point. Really? Not a one? Okay. Well, this is the start of, of what I think will be a, a series in our, our Vault professional topics. Unfortunately, due to the time constraints, it really didn't let us, Michael, do a deeper dive into all of the different functionality and features. So in the future, we'll be breaking this out into other topics and really highlighting things like lifecycle definitions and categories, uh, in addition to some of the new features available for reporting and bills of, bill of material management. I suppose, Michael, if we don't have any additional questions, we can give these, these people back some of their day. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we have uh, one, one question here. What is the cost of Vault Pro? cost of Vault Pro, I encourage everyone to reach out to their, to their account advisors. Um, there's often sp uh, specials and promos running, as you would know, Michael. So I think that uh, that's probably the best way to, to find out. Yeah, there's, a, there's not one blanket cost. It, it, there, there's some variables involved. So uh, uh, Brad Clayton, I know you had asked that question. Um, you know, give us a buzz, and, and we can go over uh, and, and kind of... Uh, you know, uh, find out what your needs are, and then we'll be able to price accordingly. Certainly, and certainly a component of that would be, you know, discussing uh, implementation and you know what that means for a time frame for you know the user's company, right, Michael? Yep. And uh, I do have a couple more questions here popping up, which is nice. Um, question from Tom. Uh, the question is, can you customize Pro? Yes, highly. Um, yeah, Vault, Vault Professional uh, can be customized. We can add in 
uh, you know, different items perhaps on a right-click menu and also across the top toolbar to do a number of different things. Uh, some current integrations that we have uh, would be perhaps you might have a standard directory structure that you might have for, for when a project kicks up. So you'd have the ability to right-click and simply create that standard directory structure uh, right there and populate, you know, your, your favorite uh, folder scheme. Um, so, yes, it's highly customizable. Okay. Uh, we do have another question. Um, what do we need to consider when implementing Vault? Well, uh, so I think the first thing to consider is uh, hardware. Uh, Vault is a, if we're bringing on users, it's typically a server-based application. Uh, we require Microsoft Windows. We leverage Microsoft Windows servers. So server 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2012. Um, as well, there's a database component to this, and uh, depending on the size of the design team, uh, we may uh, use what, uh, the SQL Server Express that comes with Vault that we, in which there's no additional cost. Or if we're looking at something like replication, we may need to step up to uh, Microsoft SQL Server standard in that case. So we start with, uh, our, and actually our standard methodology for discovery is um, determining what the infrastructure requirements are, determining what the company's uh, configuration requirements may be, such as life cycles and categories and what users and groups need access to it. And then the next step is really configuring Vault and testing that configuration. We follow that up with talking about data loading. Uh, Vault Professional and Vault Basic both come with tools to load your existing uh, data into Vault. Uh, one is called the Auto Loader and it's able to grab large amounts of data and check it in. Uh, finally, we follow that up with training uh, for uh, the use of Vault Professional and oftentimes, Michael, we couple that with uh, perhaps Inventor or AutoCAD update training at the same time. So those are all things to consider. Uh, infrastructure your company's workflow, documenting that, and then rolling out uh, with training. Fantastic. And John's got a follow-up question. And Tom, we're going to uh, uh, address your question here next. John just had a follow-up. How do Vault and SharePoint work together? So with Vault Professional, um, SharePoint integration is available. Um, the what happens is uh, when you log into, say, SharePoint, we simply tell SharePoint to also perform searches inside the Vault server. So that inside SharePoint, if I'm performing a search for perhaps a part number, an index metadata field, um, that data is then presented. The results are returned to SharePoint from the Vault server. We can also, with Vault Professional, uh, since we know uh, the status of files, uh, we can make sure that uh, perhaps the users are only being returned released data, perhaps, uh, inside of SharePoint. Great. And, uh, and Tom's got a question here. And Tom, I hope I'm saying this correctly here. Say the need to export a DXF file in sheet metal from Vault, if possible. So, yeah, I think that that would be most likely done through something like the job processor and that custom action. With the job processor, um, perhaps when either a user presses a button inside of the Vault Pro client, getting back to some of the customization, or upon uh, release to the shop floor or manufacturing, one of those lifecycle states, we can write a customization that might export a DXF um, of the design at that time. Furthermore, Vault is handy where it can also manage that related DXF file of that of that uh, sheet metal component. Great, great. And I think that, uh, let's see, uh, it looks like we have a question from Phil. If someone, say in purchasing, accesses the bill of material and inserts a new item like mm -hmm. a bolt, would this bolt show up automatically on the parts list in inventor, in the inventor drawing or would it be left to the engineer designer to implement? Okay, so it would be, it would not show up directly inside of the uh, inventor in the assembly. Um, at that point, uh, it's maintained in the bill of materials. 
it the if the engineer wanted to go back and put that bolt in uh, that would be the option at that point in time but typically what we're looking for is uh, really the engineering uh, to be done at that point so that we can then edit that bill of materials and include other uh, components that may not need to be modeled uh, Michael for example it sounds like um, I'd like to follow up with uh, you know that person and you know, take a look at that with that workflow. Yeah, fantastic, Tom. If you could uh, uh, send an email um, to one of us here uh, uh, after the meeting, we'll be, make sure to kind of address that a little bit more in depth than than what we're doing here. But uh, we appreciate that. Um, and Tom, uh, I, or excuse me, John. It says, how do Vault and SharePoint work together? I think you kind of you know. Uh, touch base on that, Kevin. I don't know if there's anything more you want to um, elaborate well, yeah. on. But I... yeah, what, what really in in the in the SharePoint sense, it's a, kind of a, a list is is what actually happens, and so that the uh, the SharePoint is simply aware of the Vault server. I would like to point out and follow up to the previous question that uh, we're presenting data to SharePoint. Really, we're we're still managing all of our CAD through check in and check out um, of the Vault client, but certainly. If the Vault Thin client, that website, doesn't meet your needs or you want to bring it into other SharePoint workflows, it can be a very p powerful integration uh, with SharePoint there to bring other users into the design process. Great. Hopefully, John, that answered your question there. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll leave the floor open for another uh, five or ten seconds. It doesn't look like we have any more questions. Um, you know, I appreciate everybody taking their time. Hopefully this was a, a very informative uh, 30 minutes. We like to keep these, you know, at, as as quick as possible. We all know that you're you're busy, but we do appreciate you taking time out of the day. Um, if you haven't already, search Live Lab Learning on Facebook and like our page to receive the latest information and special offers. Uh, when you visit our website, LiveLabLearning.com, there's a complete schedule of upcoming training and future informational webinars tidbits and software updates. So I just again want to thank everybody for joining us today. We hope you found this webinar informative and to help your business and we look forward to joining you uh, or having you join us on our next webinar uh, and, and hopefully uh, educate you uh, on some more. I think Kevin is there an additional slide or we uh, uh, complete with Kevin and if you have any questions in regards to anything that we talked about today um, Contact, uh, contact us here at, uh, at Applied Software.